Serial child sexual abuser and former USA Gymnastics Dr. Larry Nasser is serving a prison sentence that will stretch past the end of his life. But the legal fallout from his years of abuse is far from over. Some of his victims are still waiting for their day in court, and Nasser could face further prosecution. But for those asking how this could have happened, the focus is turning to USA Gymnastics and Michigan State University, where Nasser practiced and served as a professor. For some insight as to what comes next on the legal front, I'm joined from Manchester, New Hampshire by Michael McCann, Associate Dean at the University of New Hampshire School of Law and a writer for Sports Illustrated. Uh, thanks for joining us. So we've had the news stories and the headlines about the entire board of USA Gymnastics resigning, people at Michigan State stepping down, but I, I feel like this is not over yet, at least when it comes to the prosecutions that are possible. That's exactly right. For one, there are ongoing civil lawsuits, both in federal and state court, against both USA Gymnastics and Michigan State. But in addition, as more evidence surfaces, as more testimony is taken, particularly when it involves current and former employees of both USA Gymnastics and Michigan State, some of them will start talking. Some of them will start pointing the finger. So what's the liability that Michigan State has? Because one of the stories that we see overnight is that people had approached the head of the NCAA as far back as 2010, letting him know that there was a problem on Michigan State's campus, not maybe specifically about what Larry Nasser was doing, but that there was sexual violence being perpetrated by some of the players, and that this was something that Michigan State needed to handle, and the NCAA needed to handle. Clearly, there was enough there that the NCAA ought to have looked more closely into what was going on. This now puts the NCAA in a position where it maybe can't be impartial. So Michigan State can now argue, you know, how can the NCAA investigate us when itself is implicated in this controversy? I think it would behoove, frankly, Michigan State, USA Gymnastics, and the NCAA to turn to some independent entity that can try to investigate without these kinds of links. One of the things that we became more aware of after the Harvey Weinstein scandal was the business of non-disclosure agreements as, as part of a settlement. That here's the money or here's a settlement and in exchange you won't say something for it. And we kind of saw that again in, in the case of one of the victims of Larry Nasser. What does that do in this context to say, does it accelerate our uh, interest in trying to do away with these or maybe uh, having a statute of limitations disappear? It's a hard issue because there's a freedom of contract argument which says you, you can't interfere with somebody's right to contract away information, that, that it's actually part of contract law. But we know that in New York, for instance, some of the le legislatures are arguing that NDAs shouldn't be enforceable when they involve information related to sexual crimes. As we've seen with Harvey Weinstein, as we've seen with other stories, these non-disclosure agreements really present major problems in terms of social policy, and maybe we shouldn't let people contract away that kind of information. Michael McGann, thanks so much for joining us. Thank you.